Welcome to Crypto News and Investigative Reports. Uh, let's get to some news. I want to show a couple of videos and let you make your own decision. Actually, it's just the uh, one video about R3 Cordora and uh, it's settling with Swift GPI. Uh, recently, Brad Garlinghouse has been going out and he's been saying that Swift takes two to three days to settle. According to this webinar, Brad is incorrect. According to this webinar, 40% of Swift GPI settlements are within five minutes. And according to this webinar, Swift webinar, 95% of Swift settlements are at uh, 24 hours. So 95% is within 24 hours and 40% is within five minutes. Number one, number two. Number three, there is no demand from any of the 11,000 banks that SWIFT is working with that, that are demanding to be paid in cryptocurrency, number one. So there are no, no banks that are demanding to be paid in cryptocurrency. So there's, there's really no real big push uh, for, uh, for the 11,000 banks that SWIFT works with uh, to be paid with virtual currency. Uh, number two, uh, or number three, I'm losing track here, but number three is, is that with, um, with no banks being pushing to be paid in virtual currency, regulations won't come for a while because there's no need for banking regulations and virtual currencies because no banks are demanding to be paid with virtual currencies. And, um, and so... And then the, the the final thing is that no banks are complaining about SWIFT's uh, recent payment times. Uh, within the last uh, uh, four to six months, SWIFT has been making their payments or settlements, uh, settlements and sending their messages. It's a messaging service and CLS actually does the settlements, but it's been cut down to five uh, minutes. And none of their clients are, have been complaining about that. None of the SWIFT um, uh, uh, 11,000 bank customers are complaining about how fast uh, they're getting their settlement in the last three to five months. They have been appreciative of their settlements being within 40% of them being within five minutes and 95% of them being within 24 hours which is not what Brad Garlinghouse said in Paris. He said it's taking two to three days for them to, uh, uh, for, for Swift to settle. Not so, according to Swift uh, uh, GPI. You can look at the last video that I put up with the webinar, and you will see that, uh, that what Brad Garlinghouse is saying, two to three days for settlement, is not accurate, according to Swift's uh, statistics that they're showing alrighty um, okay so let's take a look Is that it ensures you it, it, it ensures that parties to an agreement are kept in sync regarding 
and things like capital markets origination. So quite different use cases. Uh, so I guess you, you get the idea. There's a lot of stuff going on. But one common theme across all of these applications is that there is more often than not that a need to settle an, uh, an obligation that arises in the B2B network, the business network that Tom talked about. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a need to settle that um, using potentially uh, an off-ledger rail. Okay? Uh, and that's exactly where the settler comes in. So, so we um, so we uh, go to the next one. So, what is the problem statement here? Well, we've got three possible different ways you can pay for something. We've got PVP, payment versus payment. We've got delivery versus payment, and uh, we've got payment versus invoice. So, uh, here uh, with the quarter slash settler initially, we're just re really going to be talking about payment versus payment versus in invoice. Um, and, and to go back to Simon's original question, so what is the quarter settler and how does it relate to to, to Swift? Well. The, clearly, these payment rails are not integrated in, in, the, in the DLT business network, right? They exist off ledger, quote unquote, right? So we need a way to, to interoperate and integrate with those off ledger payment rails. And that's really what the quarter settler is. It's just a, a simple abstractional pattern that, are, that allows you to do that. Fantastic. So, um, in terms of transaction flow, uh, is it worth walking through what this looks like from a demo perspective? And uh, just walk me through a use case here. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, we, we actually do have uh, a demo later on, but uh, let's just uh, introduce it uh, in, in the slides first. So um, let's say you've got Alice and Bob, and they both have a call app. Uh, I don't know, maybe um, Alice uh, sells a, um, I don't know, a, a bunch of shares to Bob, and Bob now needs to, to pay for those. Uh, Bob might decide that he wants to pay for those via Swift GPI, for instance. So they have this obligation that arises on Ledger where Bob needs to pay Alice, uh, for some amount of uh, US dollars, let's say 1,000 US dollars, and uh, Alice may specify that she wants to be paid via, via Swift GPI, uh, so she would have those settlement instructions. At this point, we'll say the obligation is primed, um, then the, the transaction would be made via Swift GPI, as Tom noted uh, earlier on, on, on his slide. Uh, then finally, once the Swift GPI payment is settled and uh, the beneficiary's account has been credited, uh, then uh, we can finally say that that obligation has been set. So this uh, this next slide, we're really looking at the at the same thing, at the same workflow, but from a from a different angle. So um, here we can see that um, uh, party A uh, delivers the asset to party B if and only if um, the uh, their bank account is credited with a Swift GPI payment. So you can see there's three parties involved here. The Swift GPI box is actually manifested as an Oracle service uh, on, on a called a uh, DLT network, and it would uh, have access to the GPI link such that if you provide it, say, uh, a, a UETR, then you can uh, check to see whether, the, the Oracle can check to see whether that particular payment is set or not. And that's it from the slide there. So uh, essentially we can move on to a demo now. Um, Okay, right, so you can see here that we've got a quarter network of four nodes. We've got a notary, we've got an Oracle service. So this is the Oracle that integrates with the GPI link. Uh, we have party A, and we have a party B. Um, so that's just a pretty standard quarter network running it on my local machine. So what we want to do now is firstly create an obligation between party A and party B. Uh, so we can use, that, uh, use the obligation call app to do that. And we've got a nice flow that we can run via the quarter shell. So what we're doing here is creating an obligation. That amount there is in cents, so it's actually for, for ten dollars. So you can see here that the currency code is dollar and it's a fiat currency. We can say that um, RTA is the obligor, party B is the obligee, it's due by uh, some number, which is a Unix timestamp. We need to add uh, deserialization support for that. Um, someone could perhaps do that if they want to. Um, and then what we've got here is our obligation committed to the ledger. So we now want to query the vault of both party A and party B, so we can see that obligation in the vault. So you can see that it's got a unique reference, A908, etc. So if we query the vault now, um, we can scroll up and we can see that uh, it has got the same unique reference. Um, and we can see that it's an obligation for a face amount of $10 that's between party A and party B. And of course, Call the promises that Alice sees what Bob sees, so we see exactly the same thing on the on the other note. But so no, um, they actually created the wrong amount 
and the obligation. So what we need to do now is novate the obligation, we need to update it with the new place amount. So what we're doing here is um, updating the obligation to be $1,000, so that amount again is in cents, um, such that both Alice and Bob have the uh, same representation of that obligation for $1,000 in, in their bulbs. Um, normally, uh, the, the council party would want a human to uh, check any updates, but for now we just also accept in, in this demo. Um, so what we need to do now, actually, is uh, add some settlement instructions. So that's done by the obligee, so the beneficiary, uh, and we, we state for the obligation in question, we want to add the settlement method, and that, of course, is a uh, SWIFT GPI. Um, we specify the I-band that the payment should be made to, the settlement oracle we should use to check to see whether the beneficiary's account has been credited. We put in the LEI of the of the, um, of the beneficiary and also um, the um, bit code for the bank. Uh, once that's done, we can press enter and go ahead. So now the settlement instructions have been added, the obligation is primed, and we're now ready to settle. So party A can now make a payment uh, from their um, uh, from, from their account to party B. So just wait for the screen to update. Okay, so now we're going to make this payment. But initially we're making this payment for only $500. We're just going to show a partial settlement. As we can see here, the, the flow actually blocks uh, when we're waiting for a response from the settlement oracle. That's because the oracle is waiting to see whether the, um, whether the, the payment settles. So we can see now that a payment has been spent, and it has a UETR number, um, which is the string beginning with 823, and it's a payment for $500, which has been spent. So now we're just waiting for the settlement oracle to say whether that payment uh, was rejected or whether it, it was accepted, but um, credited um, the beneficiary's account. So in the background, the payment has happened, and we can see now that the obligation is partially settled, and a payment occurred for $500 with the specified SWIFT UETR. So that's the unique reference number that Tom talked about earlier. And we can see that that payment, that payment is settled. So what we can do now is just very quickly do another payment for $500 because we want to fully settle this obligation. Uh, we can then check the, um, check the obligation to see that now there's two payments, the first one for $500 which has been settled, then the second one for $500 which has been sent but not yet settled. We just get the UET up that, and then we just need to wait for the, the payment to hit the beneficiary's account. And when it does, then we can see that now the obligation is fully settled. So we can see that two payments for um, $500 um, have gone through, thus fully settling the obligation for $1,000. So that concludes the demo um, of the quarter settler lifecycle using Swift GPI as the settlement method. Great. I mean, thank you so much for walking us through that. I think hugely, hugely helpful. Uh, we have had a questions come in. Um, so we'll get to those before we get. Okay. So that's basically the settlement R3 uh, settles a thousand dollar payment in less than five minutes with Swift GPI and you saw the the whole uh, the whole thing uh, uh, played out there um, I want to see if I can show you one more thing before we go um, no I'm not gonna be able to do it okay uh, hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next video. There's some more techno technology things that I like to bring out. Um, some of this, for some of you, this might be new information, or for some of you others, it might be old. But nevertheless, it's good information. So once again, 40% uh, of Swift GPI settlements settle within five minutes. 95% of Swift GPI settlements settle within 24 hours. So. You know, so what <clears throat> what what Brad Garlinghouse is going out and saying that it takes two to three days, that's not accurate anymore, according to Swift GPI. 
that might have been accurate before GPI, but since they've been working with uh, GPI, that's not accurate anymore. It doesn't take uh, two to three days. 40% five minutes, 95% uh, 24 hours, uh, according to Swift's uh, GPI webinar. And you watched the R3 part of the webinar. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon.